Hit me. All right. So the defense, it looks like they've made a turn. So do you think they'll continue to play better football like we've seen the last several weeks? We can hope so. Does the schedule look that challenging, you know, defensively for us? There's a lot of parity in the league, a lot a lot of bad play uh, offensively uh, this season. But I th- what I find more interesting about our defensive conversation is how they've gelled through the se- season. I Now, we have to remember that that our, our two star linebackers came over in the offseason and, and have never played together. And you look at the preseason and and it seems like half the team missed a lot of time in the preseason for one reason or another. Training camp as well. So for them to to start coming together in weeks six, seven, I mean, even week five, I feel like they played a, a pretty good game. So for them to start coming together, you know, as we come into the midseason, it, it seems like the it seems like a good time. We're starting to get healthy. We had guys out through the first part of the season. In our secondary specifically, we have young guys on our defensive line that I couldn't be more excited for. I, Although I have a lot of disdain for not picking a center in the draft, uh, I'm really excited about Dexter. He's He's got to be my favorite draft pick because of his potential. He's he's been more disruptive, not so much on the stat sheet, more of like a I, like I always I'm always reminded of Alex Brown's career where his stat sheet didn't look extraordinary, but he was in every play. He was around the ball. He was disrupting the pass. He was stopping uh, runners at the line of scrimmage. And you're not going to see those kinds of things on the stat sheet. You'll see tackles for loss, but uh, but a, a stop at the line of scrimmage is just another tackle. So I think it's important to, to to keep in perspective that this team is still becoming a team, um, and it's the vast majority of the players that weren't even here last year. What David brought up earlier with with the coaching is that's another interesting conversation to me because I feel like Eberflus would make a very solid defensive coordinator, and I, I feel like this conversation has been had as his head coaching left to be seen I, I suppose if he if he does get another year or two I wouldn't be surprised I feel like this it's a bit of a different culture this um this year with with the addition of Kevin Warren so you know maybe there's maybe there's a little more understanding because of last season being such a buzz for being a complete teardown I think that um uh that this season if if they show improvement over three and 14, um, and vast improvement, like David was saying, you know, get to 500 or wherever 500 is these days. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, that, and that gives them another year. Yeah. Listen, let's put this into perspective here, right? Like you, you, you've been working in the NFL, you've been succeeding. Therefore your opportunity comes to be a head coach and you get hired somebody somewhere as a head coach, right? Um, you hire your staff members and whatever happened with Alan Williams it was clearly not predictable. Sure, you're definitely responsible for hiring the man and bringing him on with you, right? Whatever it is, whatever it is, as a second-year first-time head coach to just lose your defensive coordinator in week two, it's chaos. And, like, whether it's your fault or it's not your fault, the situation at hand is chaos, and you still have a season to play. So, okay, so now – on top of being a second year head coach with that comes with a lot on top of it. Now you got to do play calling. Now we've seen that before. We've seen Lovey call plays before. I believe Bob Babbage was doing it and he wasn't good enough and Lovey's got to call it, but Lovey has been there for like 10 years at this point. This guy's in his second year during, during, you know, during his head coach stint, there's chaos all around him. This and that. Listen, my critiques on the coaching staff are more on like the hits principle and the cheesiness of it all, and this and that. However, when it comes to you know on the field stuff, there's some timeout mismanagement that we've seen. Um, I don't know how many challenge mismanagements there have been. I, I think that's been all right, but timeout mismanagement for for sure. There's been some clock stuff, but now for a second year head coach, you're adding more on the plate with play calling, and and. Honestly, it hasn't been a complete disaster. It's actually improved. You know, one of my big critiques was, and, and David, you told me to try and you know put this out there, but it's kind of it's kind of fixing itself as it goes on. Uh, we couldn't do a podcast last week, but two weeks ago, 
I, I was telling David, like, one of my big problems is, okay, like, I like Ryan Poles a lot. I love his approach to being a general manager. However, we have a GM that was an offensive lineman, and we can't get the O-line right, and we have a, a coach who's a defensive coach, and we can't get the defense right. So, so, so like, at least with Lovey, you knew what you got, a crappy offensive rotation between coordinators and whatever offense. But the defense was there <laughs> because that's what he did. At least he did one thing well. So, you know, it looks like they're starting to maybe starting to gel. Now, is that due to, you know, the schedule's never been tough. We saw Kansas City wipe the floor with us, right? Like, our division isn't necessarily great. The Lions are the best team in our division right now. So, so we got to also take a step back and say, hey – is this due to the competition that we're facing or is it due to actual coaching getting better? I don't know. David, what do you think? The the defensive question has turned into a head coaching question, which, so I'm going to address the defensive side of that question first. Do I feel this defense has made a turn and will play better football like we've seen in the last few weeks? I think so. Yes. For many reasons, much of what you guys said is the reason why I think it's improving and it is a credit to Matt Eberflus. A lot of it also is purely based on health. You have your nickel cornerback, which is one of the most vital parts of this defense, back. You had Kyler Gordon sit out the first six weeks. He's coming out. He's making hits. He's doing blitzes really well. He replaces Jack Sanborn in those little nickel package situations. And your defense is gelling. And this, is, this was my point to begin with. You have a defense where... All four starters on the defensive line were switched out. All three linebackers were completely switched out. We're talking about seven guys out of 11 that were not playing together last year, including the fact that Eddie Jackson was hurt for the entire end of the season, that Jaquan Brisker and Jalen Johnson were hurt towards the end of the season. You guys had, you know, starting cornerbacks that aren't even on this team. So it is a big deal. It is important to see defenses that are consistent and gel together because you have defenses in the NFL that don't have as much skill that play much better than this, right? Kansas city being one in my mind that just kind of gels together. They have three, three or four marquee players, but they're not overall as good as a defense. They spend all their money on offense and that's fair, but they play well because they gel together. That is an important thing we need to mention. The other part of this is the lack of those players make you play a style of defense that you cannot play that you want to play. The same way we can't critique the offense for not running a lot of you know, uh, plays to the running back when you're on your third or fourth string running back, when you're on your second uh, quarterback, when you are on your third and fourth receiver, you have to apply that to the defense too. So now you can play a lot of cover one, fill the box. You can play a lot of man-to-man -man on the outside. You can play a lot of nickel packages that you couldn't do two, three weeks ago. So I don't think the defense is good, but I do think they are on an uptick. And you are like two or three guys on the defensive line away from being a good defense. And this is defenses that work in the NFL. Buffalo does it. Seattle did it and won Super Bowls with it, right? You've rushed four. You drop everyone back. You play man-to-man. -man, you play a deep safety. And then that gives Jaquan Brisker the positions that you know he can be in to be successful. And then you go back and you look at the history of the style of defense that this is. You are strongest in the areas in which this defense succeeds, right? So when you look at Tampa 2 style and man-to-man -man cover one defense where you do this kind of like cover one robber type of stuff, you get John Lynch, uh, Bob Sanders. Now you've got Jaquan Brisker. I'm not comparing, but the places you are strongest in is where the Bears are getting better at. So you have uh, – is it I love Tyreek Stevenson. <laughs> I love Tyreek Stevenson too. You've he got is good learning man on the field every game day. I You've love. You've got it. two man-to-man -man corners that are doing incredibly well. You've got slot nickels, right? That Kyler Gordon is now instead of being an absolute turnstile on defense, playing really, really well. So where you're weakest and where you need the most help is in an area that we are all aware of. It's the defensive line. You have you have me mediocre guys playing defensive line and if you improve that i think this defense looks better adding to your guys's head coaching comments this is where i get confused right i'm like ooh, ooh, it's the the meme of the girl you know the uh, uh, maybe uh, uh. but like 
it's because Matt Eberflus, when we did our preseason predictions, and we were somewhere <laughs> in the seven and nine territory, and at this rate and the way this season is going, and you play who you play, your teams or your opponents are who your opponents are, and you really can't help that. I don't really care about those excuses in the NFL anymore because I just don't believe in them. You're on pace to win six, seven games. Right. You just are. And having said that, our prediction was based on ideals. Justin Fields taking huge steps up, the defense getting slightly better, DJ Moore having a Pro Bowl season, yada, yada, yada. And right now we're talking about half the defense being hurt. Um, We're on our fourth string running back. We are on uh, the seventh combination of offensive line, and we're playing Tyson Bajor. David, I believe and, we. And we, I'm more we both had him. This team having seven and nine right now than I was at the beginning of the year. And if we Matt both had him seven and nine, but but didn't we both have him winning week one and week two? Right. And so you're, you're so just, seven and nine with week one and right. two being wins. So and you're more confident now with those losses. Like yeah, that's because I look at the rest poor, of the I look at the rest win. of the schedule and even like the Chargers. Yes, do I think we'll lose probably? But you do. Don't be shocked by an upset because you do have strengths where the Chargers have weaknesses. Yeah. So, guys, Chargers next week. What's your prediction against the Chargers? This might be the one game the entire season we have an advantage of in the coaching staff category. I've been overthinking Bears games a lot lately because I get excited and stuff, and so I'm just not going to overthink it this week. Um, Chargers are still a good team. They compete really well against other teams. I think the Chargers are going to charge her. And they're going to end up like nine and seven at the end of the year. I don't even think that's the right records anymore. Ten and seven, nine and eight. Um, but they're going to beat the crap out of teams like the Bears. So I think Chargers thirty. Excuse me, Chargers thirty-one. Bears seventeen. I think uh, Justin Herbert's going to shut everybody up. He's going to have a comeback game and just be like, oh, yeah, that's why we thought Justin Herbert was really good because he throws for 400 yards. All right. Uh, so you don't want to do it? That's cool, man. Uh, uh, you don't have to even give a score. No, you, don't, listen, you don't even have to give a score. How about just I'm, I'm picking Bears. I'm picking Bears. And weakness. No, no oh, bad. Bears 28-17. Fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to pick Bears 28-17. Listen, you know, I'm going to – do what I've done over and over and over again and just throw my heart out there again on a fucking fishing line, even though I'm not catching anything. And that in my heart's like a little worm that's just getting more and more fucking decrepit every time I reel it back in. You know what I mean? Um, I want Bajan to get another win. Like to me, that I would love that situation because I know it would create a huge contraback controversy and I don't care because I would still start fields most likely anyway, because this season is lost. If we had something to play for, I may then go with the hot hand because I think that would be the smarter thing, but I, I think the season is lost. But I want to see this kid run this game plan again. I want to see them take up time off the clock and limit the amount of possessions that Justin Herbert has to try and sit there and kill Because we know he can. We know he can throw for yardage, and we know he can do that. But you got to be able to sit there and keep the ball away. And I want to see this kid show some more consistency. It means a lot to me because if he does, I think you sit him back down and you really enjoy what you have in the backup quarterback position moving forward. And you can at least be confident that you may have some kind of future there. Or if not, you may you should be at least confident that if your starter does go down, you have a cheap backup for the next three years that could come in there and win you at least one or two games if he needs to. So, yeah, this is a tougher test than last week for the kid. Even though last week first start is a tough test, I want to see it. I want I want him to go out there and I want him win. But I think if they do, I think it's going to be close. So I, I'm going to say 21-17 Bears. 